So welcome back to Dirty 20, everybody. Today, we are starting a special little project that um, I am really excited about, and I hope you guys are as well. Um, kind of partly inspired by uh, having spoken to Gallifile, the creator of Star Wars 5e, and also just uh, knowing uh, this individual who's helping me out with, uh, with this um, project, uh, it's just how his brain works. Uh, he's the homebrew master, in my opinion. So I wanted to bring on board uh, the one and only Eric Johansson. Little round of applause. Oh. Oh, right. Welcome. Hey, am I applauding myself when they're only like, yeah, you know? Exactly. There we go. Hello, you. hello. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. To my little homebrewing cellar. That's where That's I live. Right. You know, your your homebrewing dungeon, right? Is... That's right. <laughs> right so um as i said we're, we're starting a new uh, little series on home brewing um you know discussing a lot of things that uh, eric and i often kind of talk about in our in our daily lives but i wanted to start with a little introduction uh to eric and his kind of gaming background a little bit about my gaming background as well because you know we're jumping into rules and crunch and all yes. these good things. So, um, Eric, could you uh, just tell uh, our viewers a little bit about yourself, kind of, you know, where you grew up, when you started uh, playing games, just a little intro. I mean, f first up, I'm from Sweden, and <laughs> I started where so many people started in our generation, which was HeroQuest. Yes. I feel I feel because we sort of miss the initial role playing sort of drive and hype and that then slowly became all the war gaming, you know, games workshop, uh, etc. And, you know, Hero Quest was one of those that sort of started capturing that imagination of you are delving in here and you're right. going to have to sort something out and there's yeah. going to be a bad guy or some artifact you need to yeah. uncover, but very structured in terms of rules because of yeah. working. Right. But yeah. and, and, and a little bit of a kind of D and D vibe to it, right? The dungeon, yeah, crawl, absolutely. The, that, that, that kind of thing. Okay. So uh, now you, you start to get into war gaming and mostly like games workshop stuff. I mean, the, it, that was the main thing that was around because growing up in Sweden, uh, these things weren't as big there as they were elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't spread quite as fast. We had a couple of Swedish role-playing games that uh, that were out and about okay. that uh, now are available in English as well. Uh, I think it's been rebranded as Trudvarg or something similar. Okay. Um, I didn't play it, mind you, but I had the book and I read right. about the monsters and things like that. So but there, uh, either there way, like, like there were tradition of, of, of like role playing or, or even war gaming in, in Sweden. No, so not not really. Okay. Uh, there were, I think, we had one Games Workshop store in in Sweden, in the country. which happened to be close to where I lived. Right. Um, oh, it's cool. So they, they, yeah, exactly. I walked in one day, I found like a packet of Space Marines, and then uh -huh. there we go. So okay. board games were much bigger before then. Right. And so did you like immediate what 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 was the attraction? Was it was it the rules? Was it the figurines? Was it what was it? I think that's what's so interesting and uh, why it then comes full circle eventually, because I didn't do any role playing and storytelling. I was all mechanics, uh, mm -hmm. you know, including computer games, war gaming, you know, very sort of army list thing, uh, which sort of lost what initially drew me, which was the miniatures, the story, like, why are they wearing these colors mm -hmm. and these armors what does that marking mean on his mm. shoulder pad yeah why funny, is he fighting it? the other guy yeah yeah the, the 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 role playing element almost is like actually kind of comes naturally to us particularly as children and we somehow kind of as we grow older we have to put these almost arbitrary things you know like mechanics and rules just to, just to make us feel like we're not just sitting in the garden playing with with, with our imaginations you know what i mean yeah like no no like exactly that. because that that's the thing that's interesting right because you and me met 
And right now, most people will say, okay, they are they are role player, role, role play gamers, mm-hmm. and uh, then war gaming secondary. Dab, but yeah. when we met, we met as war gamers. We both yes. entered like a gaming club that did very like historicals and so on and so forth. And mm-hmm. we connected over Shout straight out up war Tunbridge games. War gaming. Mm-hmm. Wargaming gaming club yeah that's yep. right um and uh it sort of took off from there before we started then pulling more and more narrative into it like mm-hmm. we started then doing okay we're gonna do the war game but there's a campaign there's mm-hmm. a narrative we name our miniatures they're like this elite squad and their right, names right. and their equipment yeah, i i remember very clearly like the moment when i when i thought uh, Eric would really like role playing games. Was you yeah. were putting together a uh, Kill Team campaign? This is before right. the the re kind of re release of Kill Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had kind of created this wicked narrative scenario with like a map and like you know every time you fought you would take a new piece of the map and it was kind of it was the kind of war game that I'd always wanted to do but I'd never really gotten into. Um, but you know, I had, I had already kind of progressed to, to D and D, but I remember saying yeah. to, to you, I think you'd really like D and D. And that was your I, first yeah. exposure to RPGs, right? Like, I'm um, sorry, I shouldn't say that because I was actually surprised. So tabletop RPGs, because you are an obsessive gamer and it turned yes. out that you knew more about like forgotten realms. <laughs> than than I did, uh, you know. Considering I've been playing it in it like for, for years. Yeah, I mean more than like movies and comic books, etc. I've always like delved straight straight into like game worlds, like computer games, board games, whatever. And it's it, it's almost weird how long I like dodged the role playing thing, and that you came in and introduced me because it felt like I was constantly on the verge, but Mm. never took the plunge. And as you're saying there, I played all of the old Black Island Island games, et cetera. So I, you know, all the Bondage Gate, you know, Neverwinter Nights, Icewind Dale, uh, and so on and so forth, and all their successors. What what kept you away from from, from giving the tabletop? Was it just, you didn't have a group of friends? I mean, that's often the case with a lot of people. Uh, What was it that kept you from like, Kind of getting into it i mean it, it is a great question a lot of the time i think it's literally that like i didn't have anyone to play with but i also uh then stayed strangely away from it uh, i can't put my finger on it exactly and it almost seems silly in hindsight but mm-hmm. i didn't they i wasn't exposed like i didn't right. get the books in front of me i'd forgotten about the books i owned as a child and never played i had forgotten right. about all of that so you know like games workshop uh, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Battles, that was all that was left. And I just ate like every rule system that came out because mm-hmm. Wargaming then exploded and everyone made their own war game and offshoot, etc. And like, uh, and I just consumed all the rule books and like started, you know, oh, I like Kill Team, but I want to change these things. Mm. Was that quite, the don't first... quite like this version. <laughs> was, was that the first time or had you always been like, quite you know like tweaky like with with rule sets it it was always a little tweaky because obviously when i started grasping the idea that they revamped their editions Mm -hmm. in in any war game uh, to update the rules there was always something i felt oh i missed this or they shouldn't have made this change or I just don't like this part of the rule set, so I'll remove mm. it because it's more fun if I don't use it. Like that was always there. Like to me, that's such a fascinating mindset because, uh, like, I, I often struggle to like learn rule sets, new rule sets, and things like that. And so once I have a rule set in my head, I, I'm I'm so reticent to deviate from it. Uh, and and I think that that is very much like a, like a, there, there's people who automatically go there right to, to like oh, how can I make this better how could I you know want to look like uh, it, you know on un, under the hood that that kind of thing would you say that you're one of those people 
Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it's also quite funny, as you know, because if I'm not allowed to say I'm a player rather than a DM yeah. or with a group that I don't know well or et cetera, what I do is I tend to find, oh, how do I, how do I break the system? What am I not meant to be doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, how do I make a dexterity based yeah. barbarian, for right. example? Right. You know? Yeah. So always. Kind I shouldn't of do it. No, I mean, I, I like I've always found it really interesting, and I've, so I've I've always kind of bounced weird ideas mechanically off you because I, I think you have a very kind of solid understanding of that. Okay, but l l let me ask you. Um, you know, you've been role playing now for 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 a number of years. Do you have any kind of uh, particular memories that you're like, ah, oh, this was such a great moment, and this is this is the moment that I knew D and D was for me, or or something like that. Honestly, it was probably straight off the bat. So okay. essentially, you invited me to a game because you had reconnected with an old friend and yeah. you were sitting down and you're like, Eric, I think you would like this. Just come over. I rolled a wizard, I believe. And we were like What's half it? through the session. I can't even remember. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're all, this is one of your funny quirks. You're always very reticent to let people know what class you're playing. Because that, that's you've true. often tweaked things or made things just a little bit different. So you, you kind of want people yeah. to, to guess, which I always find interesting. I, Sorry, I, do, I, do, I do enjoy that. Yeah. I also have that thought. It's like my character doesn't think that he's a class. He's just himself. That's right. But yeah. Like I had that moment about halfway through the session where for the first time it was properly where I was asked then in my head, like, what would my character do so sure i done killed him with heavy, heavy narrative and he was you know ca captain angelos or whatever but i thought what should eric do because i want to win but mm -hmm. here it's like what would my character do because halfway through the session i'm like okay i can actually make whichever decision i want i can't win because there is no winning i just need to do either what I find enjoyable or what makes for an interesting story. And, you know, that's when I'm like, okay, here we go. You know? Yes. Yes. I, and I think that that is, that's a great uh, point to end on actually, because I think that a lot of people, regardless of kind of where, what the direction they're coming from, you know, whether it's, you know, you're big into your war games into your mechanics and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, you've never played any games and you're, you know, a, an improv actor or something like that. I think that moment where you kind of connect with, you know, playing a role, right? Like playing someone else, something that the other games never quite get there, right? Yeah, no, indeed. It's like you go and get the artifact or you die on the way. And those are the only two options. Either you win or there is a failure state and that's it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, um, we've known each other for a number of years now and we are kind of uh, always playing D&D &D or some kind of role playing game uh, with each other. And um, I remember one time I was DMing for you. This was when we were doing, uh, when we worked together in a gaming shop and uh, we were doing like a mm -hmm. staff campaign. And it's one of my favorite moments as a DM where I, I took the party to Azcatla and I knew that we were going to this marketplace. And, uh, you know, we talked about you having loved Baldur's Gate and, and games and how they were your childhood and stuff. And I found the music from the game, which plays in the market, which is like a quite a big part of, yes. of I think, Baldur's Gate 2, right? Yes. And your face, and... when you realize, because like, I just started playing it, and then, like, I saw your eyes go, oh. it was such a good moment, man. Seriously, it's one of my I proudest. I know. It was so so good so good so iconic it's so early in the game you just come out of your first like dreadful dungeon you're breathing the fresh air for this first time that music plays yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant okay guys so, so good uh this uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna stop there for, for this first episode but uh yeah coming your way we're gonna be talking about homebrews about um 
you know, classes, different rules that we've tried out, that we've talked about. Eric is also working on, I want to say his own variant of, of, of uh, D&D, um, which is actually kind of looking really fun. Uh, but yeah, he's overhauling it completely. And we're going to be talking about all of those amazing things. As always, guys, it's gonna please, be great. yes, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. And as always, Eric, what should they do? Keep slaying. If you've enjoyed this content, then please smash that like button, subscribe, share this around online, and uh, come and visit our website, www.lavictoriaproductions.com, to see all our past episodes, as well as our blog posts, and all the stuff that we're currently working on at La Victoria Productions. Why not reach out to us and tell us what you think of our videos? You can reach us on Twitter, at Mouth La Victoria is our producer. We are also on Instagram. I am Enano LVP, and our producer is Jazzy J. Shiro. We're also La Victoria Productions on Facebook and LinkedIn. Come on by and let us know what you think.